Hey guys. What's up? Welcome back. Long time no see. <laughs> uh, this is just, I just talked to you guys yesterday. Uh, video went up and now we are on day one of flower. Girls have, uh, obviously trellis net is down, but girls have experienced their first 12 hours of darkness. And uh, this is their first 12 hours of light. So we'll be calling this uh, day one of flower, day one of 12, 12, however you want to look at it. Um, but we are up and going. And if you go back to the last update to see right where these were, um, good little bit of growth over the first night. Definitely, uh, definitely growing. Definitely jumping up. Yesterday they were not through this at all. Just a couple little, uh, couple heads were peeking up, but some clearance now. So looking good. Um, so what I like to see, because I told you last time, I just got the grow link and the watering data hooked back up. Um, didn't really monitor it in veg. Didn't really monitor it in veg. Um, but now going into flower, trying to get it set up and going. And uh, honestly, the plants are just not drinking up all that fast. Um, we're not gonna. We're at basically like one watering a day, and it's not uh, exactly like needed right away at the beginning of, of lights on or the light cycle. I expect that to change pretty drastically in the next few days as these really get into stretch. Um, temperatures are up, PPFD is up, obviously DLI is down because our, uh, our photo period is down to 12-12 from 18, but uh, PPFD is up and everything's, everything's going, so we should have some, some pretty good solid growth uh, throughout the week. Like I say, we're at day one, so I'm going to keep you guys updated. And then also with the flip, um, we'll be the perfect it's been a while since I had like a perfect flip day where I can get you guys a full seven days of updates every week, uh, every weekend kind of thing. It'll be that way. So happy to see that. Uh, other thing I'm happy to see is how branchy this little uh, mystery grow off strain is. Questioning if I should run it topped or untopped, but uh, day one of flower and they're untopped. So we're gonna let it go for now. I did get a whiteboard. Oh, it's already racked. It's already wrecked. You already got smudges in the pie hoe, um, but got uh, got general parameters up here. We can look at it as uh, as we go into day one. But general room parameters: temp 82 degrees, plus or minus, and uh, even at the nighttime, really doesn't drop below 78. We're at a pretty constant temperature temperature in here, 24/7, 365. Uh, relative humidity. 65 to 70 it's a touch low honestly i wouldn't mind getting it up a little bit but that's just where we're riding um no supplementation just natural co2 is not enhanced so we're at about 420 ppm um 400 to 420 i feel like 420 was more appropriate for the board uh ppfd is 700 really it's actually like closer to eight in like the 770s right now but um 700 up there for now and doing that is just under 1200 or 1200 just under 480 watts uh which is 60 percent of the power of this led it's an 800 watt led system so uh running at that and then we'll incrementally be uh pushing that up i don't know 50 watts a day till we get up to uh, right around 600 maybe 650 watts we'll see how the canopy's doing um then we have nutrients on the board like i was just explaining this will get a little bit more in depth but this is what they're being fed going into flour simply jacks and calcium nitrate at four grams per gallon for jacks two grams per gallon um, two grams per gallon of calcium nitrate and that gives me an ec just uh, plus or minus on two um, right now it's measuring at 2.1 so that's what we wrote down and then once a week i come in here and i water trivis by hand uh, two milliliters per gallon eh, you know sometimes i miss it sometimes i do it twice a week it's a by hand thing it kind of messes up the uh doing it by hand messes up my system sometimes but at the same time uh i actually haven't had any issues with tribus clogging any lines it definitely doesn't clog but any kind of like biofilm and lines but just as a precautionary if you can water it by hand it's probably the better way to do it and that's just kind of how i've been doing it i, I honestly with tribus i find that the once a week is the best application because i feel like there's surges of it versus trying to keep it constant i just don't feel like i get the uh the benefit as much or maybe it's just not as noticeable but when i kind of like per week surge it i definitely feel like i get uh, i get some benefit there so that's how i run it um anyway that is it for day one uh i'll talk more on the board as i get more information up throughout the week but uh, feel free to drop in the comments what you guys want to see on here as i get the grow link data i'll do some simulated graphs and things like that uh, but again just kind of point me towards what you want to see on this 
So I gotta mix up a reservoir, speaking of jacks. Uh, I have 20 gallons of water in here. And if we do the math, 20 times four, what do we got? We have 80 grams of jacks, 80 grams of jacks per day. And uh, 20 times two, 40, uh, 40 grams of calcium nitrate right here. So I will mix it in. Um, jacks first, I guess we should probably go like this. Um, jacks first, calcium nitrate second. We wait till the jacks completely dissolves and then we put the calcium nitrate in. Question of the day, why aren't I using Epsom salt anymore? The reason being because I do not believe my plants needed it. I don't believe they needed it. I don't believe they need it now. I believe it was extra PPM in the solution that yes, sulfur can sometimes have a flavor uh, enhancement to it. And that's what a lot of like turpinator and some of that old stuff was uh, sulfur and some things. Um, but just because I'm not adding Epsom salt does not mean magnesium and sulfur are not in the solution already. Jax um, has Epsom salt in it. It's six, I think it's six and a half percent magnesium and whatever percent, three percent or six, whatever it is, percent sulfur. Nonetheless, when you calculate it out, it's actually very sufficient in both of them. And only guys having LED problems have ever claimed that magnesium was really needed. And I myself did find some relief from some high magnesium runs, but it was not repeatable on point every time. Um, and as I found out more and got into some higher ECs, I really just found out that uh, higher EC did a lot of what uh, the magnesium was doing. So I don't know if it was by adding so much magnesium sulfate, was I raising the AC, EC to a point where we had better osmosis and plant growth? Or was it something, was it like overcharging the cocoa so much with the magnesium, that potassium and calcium are more of it? There's a lot, but long story, there's a lot of possibilities and like tangents we could go off in our minds on what interactions were happening. But the gist of it is, is I do not believe, Jax does not believe, um, and I can tell you the only time I do believe it ever possibly needs some magnesium is still in, a ma in an LED room. Outdoors in an HPS, Jax at four to two, you will never ask for magnesium. But in an LED room, some people will think, um, but it does kind of come down to the difference between purple petiole Petiole being the, the stem leaf there, as you can see, it's green on the other side. Um, purple on top. There's some reasons for that. Um, but if you look at the stem, yes, there may be some slight purple uh, streaks here and there genetically, mostly on the underside. Um, but a green, malleable, not brittle stem. That is not an issue. When the stem is not purple, that's not purple stem. When the petiole is purple, that's, that's an LED thing, but it is not a problem. It's just an LED expression of how the plants seem to express themselves. If someone can prove to me it's a problem, feel free. I'd lo I, I would love some academic studies on this. I'm dying for them. It's, it's actually a request. But from everything I've seen, purple petioles, no purple petioles, high magnesium, low magnesium, um, not one has proven to be substantially better or quote unquote fixing any problems that uh, people have had. But higher temperatures, better ambient temperatures, 80 degrees plus, overall good ECs, not babying your plants, they respond really well. And that's what I found is the best. Um, so anyway, back to the original point, why am I not running uh, Epsom salt or more magnesium sulfate? Because they're perfectly sufficient. Um, Jacks without adding any quote unquote cow mag or magnesium sulfate or anything is almost the identical um, magnesium levels to Athena and a couple others that people will claim like, Oh, I switched to Athena and I didn't have any magnesium problems. It's like, dude, it's literally, I have, I have lab results. They're identical numbers. So it wasn't that, but you know, that's the point. Um, but I didn't want extra EC to deal with in my media, especially if it wasn't getting used by the plants. I wanted to limit my wasteful EC and maximize my useful EC to the plants. Um, so that's my realizing magnesium sulfate was not the key to everything. More CalMag, man, more CalMag. Oh, okay, it's day one. We're like 10 minutes into this update already. So, whew, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll see you later in the week. Hold tight. My, oh my, look at these ladies go. Day four of flower. Um, four days passed since we flipped the light cycle and fabulous amount of growth. Uh, overnight last yesterday they were looking just great don't get me wrong um did a little bit of uh of tucking and weaving in here but uh they were tucked and weaved just yesterday and we already have a couple inches um, kind of up over where those were especially on there's a couple 
like this one is really stretched out and uh, coming up nicely. So good growth, good response to that. We'll keep, we'll keep doing that where we can. Tuck it, weave it. Just kind of spread where we can. Some of them will have to uh, maybe have to wait for a couple more inches, but definitely going to be able to spread the canopy out nice and horizontally. So let me get in here, um, get a little more focus on this, but in general you see what's going on and uh, show you guys what they look like after I'm done. All right. Day seven of flower, everyone. Day seven and looking good. Um, I think I was in here yesterday, either the day before, just kind of tucking and weaving. Actually, I think it was the day before, tucking and weaving in here. Um, and every day they just bounce back vertically every time. And I, it was definitely the day before I must have been in here because I know last night I didn't come in at all. And uh, the, the difference right now is huge. I, I wanted to come in here and do one more tuck and weave. And it can be done, but... Um, but they're they're pushing they're pushing 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 so i'm gonna do one more tuck and weave see if i can really fill out as much as i can hopefully that uh the problem is is when i tuck and weave i want it all or nothing i can't i can't have one cola and not get tucked if the rest of them all get tucked it's going to throw off everything um, but i think there's enough space so we can get it done but uh, this will be it for week one of flower so like i said day seven here um and we are right right where we want to be. There's really not too much to be done. A little tuck and weave, and then going into next week, uh, you know, week two will be trellis net number two. And like I said at the beginning, this is a stretchier strain, with, especially with Tahoe, genetic, Tahoe OG and the genetics. Um, but uh, I think get one more tuck, really be on point. But if, even if one more tuck doesn't happen, I think even with two more weeks of stretch, we should be okay. Just worst case, just over the uh, the last pillar, and that's fine. We we can go up to six to twelve inches over that and be okay. Still have plenty of space. Um, but that's the pie hoe, the grow off little mystery strain, untopped and working out nicely. I think they'll they'll fit in height wise right where they need to be. Um, it's been a I have no idea what to expect, but it looks a little skunky from what uh, some other people are saying. Some good branch structure. Um, so I think the untopped was probably a good call there. We'll see in a couple weeks how that works out. So happy with where the plants are, especially health wise. Um, no signs of flower yet. So that'll allow me to keep, uh, I'm gonna keep spraying um, spinosad and suffoil. Suffoil X, so keeps my IPM going in here through uh, all the way up till now, day seven, and probably do one or two more days here, get into day, uh, who knows how far we'll get in, but probably day day eight or so of flower and be done with that stuff. Everything else is looking really nice. And then uh, I actually have a, a new kind of IPM method we're gonna be testing out here, we'll do a video on it before we get it in the garden, but uh, start implementing that right after as well too, so everything right where it needs to be and uh, it's kind of all because conditions are uh, are doing very very well um, we can go over the board and start to check those out here okay so the genetics across the board most of it we're talking is pie ho it's a great pie across the Tahoe G um, and the current room parameters we've got 82 with a six, six, 82 degrees Fahrenheit freedom units, um, 65 to 70% RH in here. DPD works out pretty well there. Um, CO2 is not enhanced, so we're running ambient, 400 and 420. PPFD is 700. We're creeping up on that as the, uh, as the plants grow up. We are creeping up a little bit. And right now we are kind of maxed out. We started the week at about 480 watts or 60% and we are creeping up um, we've been at 70 percent for a couple days at this point three days so that runs about 560 watts uh, per light here so a little over a thousand watts for the garden and eventually we'll get them up to 600 maybe 650 watts per fixture and that should be absolutely maxed out now this whole time um, in flower 
They have been fed Jax and calcium nitrate at a four to two ratio and at four grams, two grams per gallon. Exactly, that's, uh, that's not only ratio, but that is actual weights for what I'm putting in my reservoir. And that comes out to right around a, uh, was a 2.1, today I measured we're at like 1.9 with the new batch. Uh, there's a little bit of, uh, there's about five gallons that stays in the res when I refill it and remix, so the EC overall ch drifts a little bit. Um, but I wasn't as strong on this last reservoir as I wanted, and um, I don't want to say it's showing in the medium, but I think I mixed a res at probably around like low 1.6s, and I thought I was at 2.0. I think the last res was probably about 1.6. I don't know what happened there, but hey, shit happens. Um, plants aren't skipping a beat. I don't see any deficiencies. Everything looks healthy, green, beautiful. Um, but the media EC is plus or minus 2.0 right now. So the media EC and the input EC are almost identical. Um, so we're definitely not stacking and we're definitely not, uh, well, we're not stacking. We're not, we're not stacking up nutrients in the medium. Um, not that we have to, but we definitely, with where I think the plants are going to get growth phase through stretch here, 2.0 media EC, a touch low. I'd like to get that to three, maybe even four EC in the medium. Um, but three EC would be a good good target to get up to but it will um generative growth that'll stack and, and get us there uh once a week they're being fed tribus by hand that may end up in the res may not uh, but right now being fed by hand which worked out because i did have to kind of um a couple of my plants were running away getting a touch drier and i just don't think uh, a touch drier than my control plant that i'm referencing um so there's a couple that are on a quicker dry out than a couple of the rest of them. So I got everything up to a saturation by hand. It gave me a good way to, to uh, really water in tribus nicely there. Um, but got up to saturation by hand and then uh, GrowLink has been handling everything since. Oh, really, really happy with these. Like I said, I do want to do a tuck, but uh, just at the same time, I don't want to do a tuck because these things are so perfect. <coughs> um... And then I was starting to put some water content value and things up here um, to talk to you guys about. But basically, like, the low water content when they're getting watered is right around 42, we'll call it 42, eh, 43% is when the low. And the high or kind of the maximum that they're getting up to is uh, 56% which is basically field capacity for this. That's the point where we are getting some runoff, 56. I was actually at 58 and I'm dialing it down. I'm at 56 tonight. Probably planning to get 54 tomorrow. Um, and I was at 46 before, so, or, uh, yeah, yeah, 46, 46 before. So they're kind of getting offset lower and lower, but that's kind of the range I'm working with right now. It's a fairly generative, generative dryback, um, but not, not incredibly aggressive. We're not dipping into the 20s or the teens as far as actual, but as far as our percentage that we are drying back overnight is a good generative growth amount. And uh, like I said at the beginning, we're keeping them happy, healthy, moist. And you can tell that in the beautiful, malleable, malleable stems, uh, like ever so slightly, you can see a streak of purple there, but I would never call that a purple or even a streak thing. That's just genetics showing themselves in there. Um, but beautiful, green, malleable, bendy growth. So, um, usually when things dry out, things get a little more brittle. And so, anyway, I think they're doing really well. Um, runoff and everything is uh, within spec. Um, part of the reason that I'm coming down on my field capacity towards 50, 54 is because that's where I was last run. Um, but that was kind of, I was closer to... Mm, not quite sure how I should explain this, but I'm still getting runoff. Even if I come down to 55%, 54%, I'm still going to have runoff. Um, even though it may not be full field capacity, we're still getting some good runoff. So, All right. That wraps it up for this week. A uh, little bit lengthier update, but I'm liking being able to give you guys content day over day to see the progress of these because it's a fast-growing, um, fast-growing strain one 
uh, but also time of the grow. The first three weeks, just, you know, you guys know, if you've done this before, obviously, you know, but uh, things happen quick. The stretch goes, goes, goes. We got to keep up. We got to keep up. And then the last half is, uh, I don't want to say cruise control, but you're kind of just hanging on to the reins and making sure uh, everything stays a course and nothing gets too far awry. But this week, these, this week and the next two weeks are really when the action of the growth phase happens, explosive. And uh, I think we're right where we want to be. We're going to keep up, and uh, you guys will be along for the ride for whatever happens. So thank you guys for stopping in. Like this video if you don't mind. Subscribe if you haven't. And regardless, I will see you guys next week.